day 29 of praying through the Psalms. Today we look at Psalms 57 and 58. And today they don't really go very well together. They're two pretty distinct Psalms. So let's take a look here. Psalm 57 is another individual lament from David. And in this one, as we've seen in many others, he is fleeing from an enemy. It happens to be Saul, who we know pursued David quite vigorously, uh, often prompting David to take refuge in a cave. And so indeed he does so in this psalm as well, only to discover that he is trapped. The enemy has laid a trap for him and dug a pit at the opening of the cave so that when David emerges in the darkness of night, he will fall into that pit. But hooray, emerging from the darkness uh, and the safety of the cave, David finds that it's his enemy that has fallen into the trap set for David. This allows David to escape and prompts his praise as the night gives way to dawn. This psalm represents the deep faith of David that we have been learning so much about in this process. He recognizes that his ill fortune is not the case to dampen his faith in God. He exalts God whilst in the cave. He says, you know, I'm in the midst of lions, and then yet he says, be exalted, O God, above the heavens. And then when good fortune falls upon him and he is able to escape he does not make his that does not make his faith superfluous mm -hmm. faith is important when we're in the worst of days when we're in the best of days and everything in between and david shows this consistently he has strong emotions he brings a lot of things to the to the foot of god's throne but he always ends with this element of faith it is the consistency in a very inconsistent life. And so he, indeed he exalts God when he escapes the enemy. Um, one commentator wrote, the truth is that very often it is the passing through desolation that prepares the heart for devotion. And certainly we see that in this psalm. I really, I really like this psalm. Um, I like the imagery in it. The next psalm is Psalm 58 and we change tone a lot. This is actually a political psalm. Wow, politics in the Bible. Um, it was even an issue back then. And so David questions the motives and righteousness of the rulers of his time. The lords, the priests, the societal influencers. Yes, they had influencers even before social media. And so in verse 1 through 2, where he would commonly uh, cry out to God and, you know, offer some sort of plea to God, he just jumps right in with a question and answer to these rulers. Are you just and do you judge with equity? And the answer is no. And he goes on to explain that answer, saying that they have been wicked always. They spread lies. They have the venom of a snake and they do not listen to anyone no matter how well spoken that person is then in verse six through nine he calls on god with very strong language he asks god to break the teeth in their mouth we've actually seen him say this before what that means is render them completely ineffectual so not just you know beat them down for the moment but take their teeth out so that they can never harm anyone again. Uh, and so he says, let them vanish like water. He says, um, let their arrows fall short. Let them be like a slug that melts away as it moves along. Let them be like a stillborn child that never sees the sun and let them be, you know, swept away like pots. And that's some difficult Hebrew there to translate. So no one's quite sure what exactly that imagery means. But the idea is that God is going to destroy these unrighteous, unfaithful, wicked rulers and remove them from these positions of authority. And so in verses 10 through 11, he has a trust statement here, imagining this future when this will happen, when the righteous will rejoice in the fact that they've been avenged. And again, very strong imagery. He says they dip their feet 
in the blood of the wicked. Ah. And the people say, surely the righteous still are rewarded. Surely there is a God who judges the earth. Now, this is a difficult one for me. This is really strong language that to me is very harsh. I, I, I get the sentiment of it, but I struggle a little bit with the language. So if I was praying this, I'd probably change up some of that language a little bit. But he does have an excellent point that for God to be a God of justice, for God to be a God of grace and mercy and justice, justice at some point in time needs to be handed down. Uh, we expect justice from God. And when you are in a situation of unjust authority, Yes, you could feel the, this strongly as David does. It's a harsh and ugly poem because this is a harsh and ugly matter. It might help to think of a ruler like Hitler and the atrocities that committed and the evil. And just that was a clear one where, of course, he's evil. And yes, we would wish for God to take him down. Um, that kind of a ruler, the language is is harsh. And so this is a prayer for people who find themselves living under unjust human authority. And the key here that we learn from David is to leave the vengeance to God. In verses 6 through 9, even though this is what David wants, he doesn't go out and do this himself. He calls on God to be the arbiter of justice. And that is exactly whose hands we should leave it in. Human justice is nowhere near as good as God's justice. God's justice is perfect. He sees the heart. He knows who is truly in need, who is truly wicked, and who does deserves to be wiped wiped out and who isn't. And we have to leave that to God. But we can certainly pray for God to execute justice and rejoice when justice um, happens. So my, when might we pray these? Um, Psalm 57 would be a good one to pray when we feel like there is no way out. We have these instances in life. We take refuge and we find out, oh no, I'm stuck in a corner. I don't see a window or a door that's opening for me and I don't know what to do next. Um, then we can pray this and pray for deliverance and rejoice and pray for what that deliverance will look like. Because as many of us know, when you are in a corner, if you are patient and you are faithful and you cling to God with the mustard seed of faith that you have, God will provide a way out. We just have to trust and wait on his timing. And so great one to pray for that. Um, Psalm 58, again, is for when we struggle under unjust authority, either as individuals or as members of a greater community. We would pray this with humility because where we might think um, we're under unjust authority, someone else could think the exact opposite. Sometimes it's pretty clear. Sometimes it's less clear and murky Who who's a, you know, righteous person of authority and who isn't. Uh, politics is an interesting game. So we want to pray this with humility and we want to leave it in God's hands. And then we want to add to it the lens of the New Testament. Um, we would pray that the human unjust and deceitful authorities would turn from their ways, repent, and accept the grace offered in Jesus. That's the ultimate hope. But we can also recognize that the true forces of evil, Satan and his minions, will be destroyed. And that is what we want. So today, I am going to pray Psalm 57, leaving Psalm 58 aside for now. Um, and I, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to pray and then pause and have you kind of think and meditate on some questions that I'm going to ask in the prayer. So make this like a contemplative prayer where we bring our needs before the throne of God. So please pray with me. Gracious God, have mercy on me. My God, have mercy on me. In you, I take refuge. I take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. So now let us think, for what do we seek refuge today in God? What disasters seem to be swirling about that cause us to run into the mouth of the safety of the cave?
Why do you seek refuge in the shadow of God's wings? I'm going to pause and allow you to state your plea to God. Gracious God, we cry out to you, God Most High, to you, Lord, who vindicate us. You send me, you send from heaven and save me by the grace of Jesus Christ. You rebuke those who hotly pursue me, whether enemies of Satan and his minions or the forces of darkness or the struggles we have with other humans. God, you send forth your love and your faithfulness. Sometimes I feel like I'm in the midst of lions, God. Sometimes I feel like I am forced to dwell amongst ravenous beasts, men with teeth sharp as spears and arrows whose tongues are sharp swords. But, O oh God, be exalted above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. For even now, even in the cave, even with enemies circling outside, I know you, I trust you, I have faith in you. So let us now think, what is it that is pursuing us? Maybe it's addiction. Maybe it's the lies of the enemy. Maybe it's shame. Maybe it's our sin. What is it that threatens to back us into the corner? Lift those things before God. Gracious God, the things that hunt us might lay a trap for us, but we will find by your grace and mercy that they have fallen in to the own trap they have set. God, my heart is steadfast. May my heart be steadfast. May my heart be steadfast. May I sing and make music. Awake, my soul. Awake, instruments of praise. I will awaken the dawn and praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will sing of you among the people. For great is your love reaching to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. And now we imagine ourselves emerging from that cave our enemies defeated, the things that hunt us down in the pit, the dark giving way to the beauty of the sunrise as we praise God. Imagine that moment of freedom. Imagine that door opening, the window opening, and God leading you out of that corner and offer to God your praise. Be exalted, God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. Let us know that we are not alone, that you are with us, and that we just need to keep following your feet. And you will lead us out of trouble 
and into safety. Indeed, you already have done so in Jesus Christ. Thank you, God, for what you're going to do for us. We wait expectantly to see how you will lead us. We love you, Lord, and we pray these prayers. A strong, mighty, powerful, saving name, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our ever-present peace in times of trouble. Amen.